So there's like uh, some things, some people like there's some people dancing out there with what look like sharp objects making a weird noise. Uh, I don't think I'm prepared to deal with anyone potentially stabbing me today. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Eagle face, you got a, you got a, a helmet on. So maybe you lead the quest. I'm Kat. And we're the, the Cool Snacks Next Next Door. Door. Talking about spooky stuff. Playing and spooky stuff. Playing spooky stuff. As our special games series, we thought, why don't we play some spooky games uh, <laughs> as well? So that it's not just us talking about capitalism wanting to murder us strategically. Yeah. May or may not include murder. We don't know yet. Uh, but not like <laughs> no, Squid murder. Games Most murder. Definitely. Like where you real die. It's like game die yeah exactly. or what's that movie where they do it <laughs> there's a lot of movies up. where people die okay it's the one that's from like the 90s that's really bad uh mm-hmm. or early 2000s uh um, okay and... oh you die in the game you die in real life stay alive yeah that one that one got it ding 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 you're welcome uh, everyone now remembers that movie <laughs> we'll check out our video games episode uh <laughs> talk about how video games are killing so we're gonna be playing call of Cthulhu, which is super fun we've played it with the black triples if you want to hear audio broadcast of that super fun where i was the keeper uh i'm not keeping today <laughs> i'm not doing it uh today uh i am playing gertie machinsky uh <laughs> i'm a union rep i'm here for the people that's all uh, I've played uh, a lot of role-playing games. I started playing in college and occasionally will keep and or GM. The music got really emotional right, right then. Um, but Call of Cthulhu is pretty recent. Um, like I said, I kept a few games, but uh, I'm very excited to play with these lovely people who I had the pleasure of playing with and meeting completely randomly because we wanted to play this game. So <laughs> you guys are going to enjoy it. It's going to be great. So Kat, what yeah. about you? Who are you? Uh, I am. I have not decided on my voice yet, but I am Ira Rosenfeld. I am a bank robber. Um, and essentially, my favorite part of my backstory is my parents were con, con men and taught me to tr- the trade early. What I cannot con, I steal. I started bank robbing when I was denied a loan because I didn't have a husband or a man to vouch for me. Now I make that every bank's problem. Um <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. Uh, but I've played Call of Cthulhu, but my memory is a void. Uh, so I don't remember any of it, uh, despite the fact I'm pretty sure I had a really good time. <laughs> so I'm excited to play this time uh, and hopefully we'll not forget this again in like eight months when we do another game like thing. That's OK. I won't take it personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a fun time. I remember having fun. I just like don't remember any of the mechanics. Sure, we believe you. Why'd you pop <laughs> it over to somebody else? All right, Mike. <laughs> okay, uh, I can go. I, I'm playing Theodore Machinsky, okay? I'm a door-to-door vacuum salesman. I'm just an average, everyday fella. Uh, Gertie's over there, over there, I guess, on Twitch. She's up there. <laughs> I don't got many ambitions. I like to go bird watching in my spare time, but otherwise I spend all my time selling vacuum cleaners going door to door. That's good. Um, my experience with role playing games now? goes way back. I started playing second edition D&D when I was in elementary school and I've been playing pretty much ever since. Yeah. Get a load of this nerd. <laughs> love that guy are you popcorn to somebody um popcorn to uh alex 
Hello, I'm Alex. Uh, tonight I will be playing Edward Falconcrest the Third, Explorer Extraordinaire, Kungaloosh. Um, he's a little Indiana Jones, a little Gaston. You know, um, I've been playing role-playing games since I was 12, so about 20 years, give or take. I started with D&D 3.0. Um, I've played, you know, every edition of that. Uh, Call of Cthulhu with this group here. Um, taking an interest in Deadlands, 40K roleplay, all that good stuff. Um, Alvin, off to you. <laughs> okay, um, I was I was too busy listening to you. Um, <laughs> hi, my name's Alvin. Um, I'm going to be playing Paris Selby, um, who is a uh, a jazz performer. So I tried to get as as crazy with my makeup and everything as possible. I do apologize to people watching. I'm going to be playing with my hair a lot. My hair is normally not this long. This is a wig, so I'm too busy just having fun remembering that hair exists. So I apologize for that. In the first place. But. Um, I uh, have I primarily do Dungeons and Dragons 5e, but um, I started to get back into Call of Cthulhu for a little while. I've been doing this for I'm going to say maybe a little bit less than ten years. I'm going to say close to like seven or eight. Um, I used to do some keeping stuff, but I much prefer. I originally wanted to say what's what's it like playing, so I ended up joining these guys' campaign. It was so much fun. I love everybody here. Um, and so I am very excited to be playing. I have not figured out a voice yet for Paris, so I, I'll figure that out when we get to me. Um, but I'm too busy playing with my hair. Uh, heading things over to Vince. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Vin. Uh, I'll be doing uh, Tony Stromboli. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Great. Stromboli came around a long time ago when we all started playing Call of Cthulhu together. And then he, he never came back for another session. There was one game, <laughs> he left about halfway through, and we never heard from him again. So I decided that we're going to get that closure today. Tony Stromboli is the inventor of the Stromboli. <laughs> <laughs> a mild-mannered Italian-American man who came here when he was a kid. Worked in textile factories until he decided that wasn't for him. <laughs> so he became a cook and he designed the best handheld Italian food money could buy. <laughs> <laughs> but he has a dark secret. Oh, or no, does okay. he? <laughs> um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, that's pretty much the entirety of my experience, so... There we go. We'll see. And I guess I'll kick it over to our keeper over to the scoreboard. Mo. Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm Mo, and I'll be keeping for this uh, evening. Um, I guess, what should I say? The scenario that we're going to be playing is more of a world uh, called the Dreaming Village. So it's going to be a little familiar because everyone is a character taken from the 1920s and uh, you'll find have been transported to a very different place than what they're used to. Um, about myself, I like running games. Call of Cthulhu is my favorite game. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, so, Mo, why don't you just start us off? Let's hop on in. I'm excited. I'm like, let's do it. Okay. So, who we start with? Can I get a luck roll? Just tell me the uh, number that you get. Oh, oh, uh, I got 90, a four. 96, baby. 44. 75. Okay. It says 12 versus 55. What does that mean? You got a 76. You're, you rolled a 12. Oh, Earth yeah. So the skill. second number is the number of your statistic, like your stat for that oh. specific thing. And then the okay. first number is what you get. Gosh. Gotcha. What you're rolling and roll 20? <laughs> 93. All right, so uh, I believe Edward Falcon Crest, you got the lowest, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, By a wide margin. So, where <laughs> are you right now in the familiar material world? I am on an expedition hunting a dangerous beast through the savanna of Africa. It's late afternoon, the sun's beating down hard on me. So what time of, you said it's an afternoon. Okay. So as you're advancing through the savannah and the heat 
of the sun above you um, with brief cooling from trickles of sweat coming down your brow, you suddenly feel a intense shade sweep over you, like you're suddenly under a canopy. Looking around, you notice that a peculiar mist has settled in. This is incredibly out of season. (laughs) You see a tail uh, flick through the mist in the distance. Ready? Aim. (laughs) And as you squeeze the trigger, you hear a loud ringing and your vision swings up as everything fades to black. Ira, what is Ira doing right now? She has just robbed a bank. <laughs> and these are okay. her We're off work. I love it. Yes. <laughs> um, and she has just gotten into a getaway car and is driving away from the bank. Okay. Um... What city is she in? I did not think this far ahead. Let's um, say you want to use Arkham as like an yeah. East Coast. <laughs> I'm there. Fill in. 100%. Okay. Uh, so you make a sharp uh, turn on Armitage Street and uh, do not account for another car that is swinging down about to T-bone you Okay. from the intersection. Can you give me a drive roll please yes drive auto yes oh i'm good at that okay or apparently not i got a 56 um and what what is your skill drive auto 51 okay do you want to push it what does that do so pushing it means that you'll roll it again okay and if you fail this time something extra bad happens yeah The consequences are worse than if you didn't. But there already are consequences. There already are consequences set in place. I got a four out of 51. Four. Okay. That's definitely a easily an extreme, right? It says extreme success. Okay. So you're, so what happens is this car is about to slam into you from the side. You see it all play out in your head. You get that 54, which then fires this synapse into the four universe and you swing <laughs> the wheel around and just clear that, ca- that, that corner. Um, and you're driving down and all of a sudden these clouds billow up around you. Okay. Your visibility reduces to practically zero and then your vision turns dark as you feel this sudden flash of panic before everything goes quiet. So Theodore Majinski, where are you right now in the world? Um, I think I'm, I either just got home from a delivery or I am out on the road making a, a vacuum sale. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you away from home? Um, yeah, let's go with yes. All right. So you're passing uh, these golden wheat fields. You're in the heartland of America. Hmm. (laughs) Um, Got a very Norman Rockwell-esque, beautiful mauve sky behind you. Um, What is Theodore thinking about? Um, He's thinking about the the next stop. Um, He's getting kind of hungry and he's hoping to find like a nice sit down diner and really see what the, what the uh, food belt of the country can show. So as you're moving towards um, kind of a more populous area to get some food, you see a, um, someone walking ahead of you and they seem to be dressed kind of differently. This um, almost a uh, long shawl is trailing behind Oh, this person needs help. I'm going to pull over. (laughs) So are you approaching them? 
Yeah, I'm gonna like pull, like go in front of them and then pull to the side. <laughs> so the car door slams, and you're approaching this figure who's now standing still. You want to hitch a ride? I can move some of the uh, some of the vacuums over. I've got plenty of space. They turn around, and you hear a loud bang, and you jolt as if you've been struck. Your vision turns dark, and this whining siren-like sound echoes between your eardrums as you go somewhere else. (laughs) Paris, where are you currently? Paris is probably in... um, I had it written out and everything. And then I looked away and forgot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hamilton Lodge in Harlem, which is a prominent ballroom. So I I imagine it's the evening. Yes. Okay. Um, In a particularly raucous night where a a jazz ensemble has come in from New Orleans to play. You get the sensation of wanting to perhaps inquire as to a, let me put it this way. Is your character um, in the speakeasy scene? Yes, most certainly. Okay. So, at the bar, there is a person sitting at the other end who you've never seen before. You assume that they've come in, perhaps, to see this this band from New Orleans. But there's something about the way they are dressed which catches your attention. It's almost an emerald suit that this person is wearing as well as what looks to be some kind of velvet cloth obscuring their face. A veil of sorts. No one else seems to be disturbed by this or register it as unusual. And you keep seeing a flash of light come from that person in your peripheral vision. Paris is 100% going to walk up. (laughs) <laughs> but I, I she's gonna uh paris is going to i'm being very particular about my pronouns paris is going to slide in um leaning very as elegantly and seductively as possible and say i absolutely adore your suit darling where did you get it you feel as if the person sitting next to you is like they almost assume the posture of a monolith and they turn to you and they say, good evening. There are many places one can purchase a suit like this. (laughs) I happen to visit one of them. Many vistas available. And you see so that keeping them a secret from me, I see. Interesting. All can be revealed in time. And you, f- you feel a flash of light again, kind mm-hmm. of pass through your vision. And the music dampens as a fog sweeps in around your ankles. The figure then is revealing their face, moving aside the velvet cloth. And right before they do, you feel this shock in your chest as your vision swings up. And the last thing you see is the crumbling of the ceiling above as a dense mist rolls in. All right, Gertie. 
I'm going to ask you the same questions. Where are you right now? Where in the world is Gertie Machinsky? Uh, at a union meeting. Like, every, everyone, get in your cats. If you want anything done around here, you got to contribute. All right. So uh, a union meeting for what? What union? Good question. It's uh, actors. Oh, okay. Today. Uh <laughs> So you're surrounded by um, various uh, various actors, uh, and a uh, there is a frizzy-haired, bushy-beard director who's rail thin in a uh, uh, a black turtleneck. And he's kind of shrieking at everyone, uh, and they're all kind of there's like an argument happening between him. And then a uh, a bunch of uh, crewmen uh, who are sort of impatiently uh, crossing their arms. Uh, what is Gertie uh, hoping to get done at this meeting? She's hoping to get enough people signed up to make it happen, to get those pieces together. It's the beginning stages. So um, do you want to step into the altercation? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Gertie legs a little mischief in getting things done. Okay. Can you give me either a charm or fast talk roll? Okay. Let me see if I can find it. So charm, not so good. Fast talk, even worse. There we go. Give it a <laughs> shot. Ooh. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> It's a 45 out of 15. Yikes. So it's like, uh, essentially what happens is kind of like there's a big, uh, uh, like in a cartoon, there's a big smoke cloud fight. And you just like try to jump in, you get thrown back out. <laughs> um, so as you are, are get turned around from this, uh, uh, um, this like industry argument, uh, you see that, are you in a, uh, let's say that you're in a theater after hours and uh, there, there have been tables set up on the stage and there are various actors and directors and producers and crewmen kind of, you know, mulling around. Um, and there is no one really sitting in the stands or the seats, mm -hmm. except you see somebody in the middle row. Uh, they appear to be dressed in a custard-colored cloak with a mask or some kind of obscuring element on their face. Mm. You immediately feel a sensation of disbelief. Hey, you, what are you doing here? This room's been closed off. It's a very important meeting. The seated figure doesn't respond, but sticks out a bony, elongated finger and points at you. That's rude. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go walk up, walk up to be like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Kick him out. Get out of my space. I filed the correct paperwork. All right. You got to go talk to Donna in HR. She can get that all sorted out for you. So as you approach, you're starting to get a better and better look. Can you give me a spot hidden roll, please? That's all. 46 nice. out of 50. Okay. You notice that through the sort of tattered uh, sheer of the, the robes this figure is wearing, you can see what looks like atrophied, almost mummified flesh. And as it begins to feebly rise from the seat, you feel this panic suffuse you. Can you give me a, let's do a psychology role to maintain um, cohesion of this reality. Okay. Nope. Oh. 45 out of 10. <laughs> Not very psychological. So Gertie kind of buckles from this force of uh, sheer terror 
and is trying to almost like in a dream crawl away in slow motion and feels the rushing of vapor in Velper. You're in a dense mist. And as it clears, so does your consciousness. Oof. Tony. We, we finally get to you. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm finally here. <laughs> is Tony making a strong bowl leap or is he doing something uh, else? To- Tony has just finished up the Strombolis for the day, cleaning up the the old fashioned pizzeria, whatever they looked like in the twenties, scrubbing down a thing, sweeping another thing. <sighs> another day's good work. Another happy Stromboli out the door. <laughs> This is, this is sweeping. It's a little things. <laughs> yeah, the, the golden uh, uh, twilight is kind of coming through the blinds. From, um, in, uh, in, uh, it, it's, it's creating a, a beautiful magic hour um, reflection on your uh, Stromboli. And so you, I assume, yeah, you're closing up. Closing up for the day. It's like a Stromboli workshop. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's like a pizzeria, but like it's only Strombolis. It's only Strombolis. It's Tony's <laughs> Strombolis. <laughs> Inconveniently, it's like upstairs. It's like in a residential building, so yeah, people yeah. have to like wait outside. We didn't have fire codes yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually by today's standards very very uh, exclusive. I have to lower them down. People pay top dollar. You'd sign up on the internet for one of these if it existed. Yeah, get drone stromboli. <laughs> As this is happening, the light is obscured by a dark shadow over the window. What's that shadow? You, you feel the fear of ages. <laughs> Would you like to look out the window? Uh... Yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna see why suddenly my beautiful view is blocked off. Um, are you in Brooklyn? Uh, we're we're outside of outside of uh, the known New York City. Like I've I've drifted to the outside of it, but like like outer Brooklyn, kind of towards Queens in a no man's land. Okay. So you're like in um oh, you're ahead of your time. I'm I'm there. There's really no one else yet. It's honestly it's a lot of greenery. Wow. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're off the grid. Um, <laughs> Rustic strombolis. <laughs> you gotta so, come all this way for my stromboli. Pioneer. Yeah. Yeah, you're like uh Nicholas Cage's character in Pig. <laughs> um, so as your view is obscured by some bizarre shadow that has rolled in you look out the window and you see that the entire sky is enveloped in this mist this dark churning mist um, you hear a frothing sound and it keeps rising higher in pitch the last thing you see is a stromboli hit the floor before your vision turns dark <laughs> and you were taken somewhere else. My stromboli. <laughs> you all wake up. The first thing you all see are the foliage and thickets of a dense, deep, dark forest. There is a hissing mist that lays low to the ground and it's kind of rolling along the atmosphere of this place is a pale blue a grayish blue you wake up each of you in ditches that are lined up for each of your bodies like 
a grave, kind of. Yeah, not as deep, but pretty much. Okay. About maybe like uh, two feet in. Um, would I, I? I'd like to try and figure out where I am. Would I roll a natural world or navigate for that? You could try that. Which one? Uh, what was the other one? Natural world and navigate. Uh, I would go for natural world. All right, here we go. Hard success. So at first Jeez, glance... We roll so well. <laughs> the foliage, the, the kind of uh, gnarled thickets, and um, really textured bark uh, of, this, of the trees look familiar at first. But upon concentrating on them, it almost looks like the textures are crawling and sort of complicating the more you look at them. I say, are they covered in insects? That's kind of the sensation, but you, you can't really tell. You chalk it up to maybe uh, feeling disorientated. Perhaps. Uh, I'm a bit woozy. That's are we all in the same location? You all wake up in the same location. Oh, okay. so we see each other. Oh, my. I'll, like, sit up and look. Yes. Can I get a spot hidden? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Error rendering roll. Hmm. That sounds good. <laughs> it says uh, 87, uh, 87 versus 45. <laughs> good start. I see um, so it's... A, oh, oh, okay, I see. Big fail. Who um, are you? <laughs> I are there other people here? <laughs> Edward Wait. Falcon Crest the Third, at your service. Goody, is that you? Theodore! Goody, what are you doing in the middle of the woods? You're supposed to be at the union meeting. You're fighting for people's rights. Speak for yourself, Theodore. What are you doing in the middle of the forest? I, I, I assumed I was on the road. <laughs> Crazy things happen out here. <laughs> The lengths I go to for my customers, you'd never believe it. Oh, I customers, believe it. you also in the Stromboli business. No, I sell vacuums. Of course not. I'm the one in the Stromboli business. It's only I've never heard of a Stromboli. What is that? It's delicious. You would love it. It's like rolled up. There's is stuff okay? inside of it. It's like hand foods. I like hand foods. I'm on the road. I got to hold them and when I drive. You and me, we'll talk. We'll talk. we'll talk, yeah. <laughs> uh, my name's Theodore, of course. Theodore. At Tony. your service. Tony Stromboli. What does you know, Gary. aside from <laughs> aside from you looking like you, what do what do you look like? To Tony Stromboli? Well, uh, yeah, everyone really. I'm oh, what oh, does everyone yeah. look like? Oh, sorry. Aside from vaguely what we look like. Um <laughs> I would say kind of imagine the hunter from Jumanji, but younger, like Teddy Roosevelt. Okay. Uh, like a mm -hmm. early, early forties Italian man. Kind of, kind of portly. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, the kind, he's he, like a, uh, a gentle face, but you, you can tell that like, he probably packs a punch but might not entirely know how to throw it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's uh, Theodore is just a, a little man. <laughs> he is skinny and he's a little short and uh, uh, he's average looking guy. He just looks uh, <laughs> unremarkable. <laughs> I'm literally just picturing Albert from our last campaign. <laughs> 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 This Gertie happens when you roll very poorly. Gertie's definitely taller than Theodore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> um, but I was picturing Lucille Ball, but Tan. I am a, a very tall and muscular lady. It's funny you say that because Paris is also tall. Her shoulders are a little bit wider than you would expect like a normal so this person very clearly at like does some kind of athleisure like they mm -hmm. work their body regularly um and 
except for the fact that they woke up in a ditch. Um, <laughs> normally, you can tell that this person puts an extreme level of detail into their attire, with the exception of their makeup, which seems to be almost cakey and very dramatic. Ah, made for the stage, I see. <laughs> um, yes. And I don't have any idea as to how I ended up here. Well, I don't think any of us do, old Bean. <laughs> Is my money gone? <laughs> yeah. Lame. Okay, I'm very mad about that. And now I'm... <laughs> my rifle. Where is it? He works oh, very yeah. hard on that money. Uh, oh no! I'm, the... I'm looking around. I rolled a spot hit and I got a regular success. Okay. As far as you can, <laughs> if you want to, you can. Okay. Um, as far as you can see, in all directions are dense woods. Um, they seem to kind of get, it gets darker as it recedes back and mm. you can't really tell what time of day it is because the, uh, inner, uh, the inner tangling of the branches, uh, is actually quite, um, layered despite none of these trees having any leaves on them. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> so what uh, do we think these uh, holes are? <laughs> what uh, rave to me, old chap? We all just yeah, that's what I'm afraid They're of. Pretty shallow, you know, for hey, a grave. Really yeah. Sometimes you got to stack them two, three high. Sometimes the third one gets a, the short end of the hole. <laughs> so they say. <laughs> Well, that's you pretty efficient. Yeah, no, because true. there's six of us, and whoever was digging these dishes got tired. Clearly, they were in a hurry. That's true. Yeah. Shallow. I mean, were we all close by to this area? I was in the Midwest, and Gertie over here was back home. I was, I in, was in Africa. Okay, clearly, clearly, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe we're all in Africa now. I don't think so, but no, this doesn't look like any part of the savanna I've ever seen. Whoever dug the ditches maybe has my money. <laughs> and they may still be nearby. And they're probably in possession of eight. Can I get um, a listen roll, please? They're in possession of eight? Ooh. Eight of uh, eight premier models of vacuum cleaner that were all in my trunk. Oh, okay. Oh, critical Whoa. success on listen. I hit the wrong one. Oh. Give me a sec. This is one I put my points into. Oh, yes. I got a hard success. I really got a success. roll like a god, apparently. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a big old failure today. That's <laughs> Me okay. too. You got two, we got two heavy hitter successes. Uh, critical and a hard. I to listen, so I better have succeeded on that roll. It's got a regular, <laughs> regular success. Edward, your hunter ears, your trained hunter ears perk up as you hear um, a cacophony of sound coming from around north east of here and what sounds like shrieks um paris the shrieks catch your attention and it sounds like um a panicked animal or perhaps person can i tell where it's coming from as well no I you know vaguely it's from over there but uh Edward, you got the, the, the pinpoint. Sounds like someone's in trouble that way. Let's go help them. Kungaloosh! And I run off. <laughs> I was going to say, we should probably head to the southwest. That's probably the safest direction if there's bad stuff going that way. Paris is going to take off their, sh their high-heeled shoes and start following the explorer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if there's people in trouble, I want to help. You know, I'm not one to not follow a pack, so I guess I'll go with you. I also follow. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not staying here alone, okay? I'll just be at the back. Come on, Theodore! <laughs> I thought about Don't jumping you... in the ditch to find my money, but decided against it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe these people have your money. They better. I survived a car accident for this. You what? A near You're car one accident. Of those fancy motor cars? That sounds fantastic. Let's yes, go. I drive. 
So as you're all um, moving through the forest in the direction of the uh, the blood curling shriek, you hmm. How are you approaching this? Are you all just running full speed? Are you trying to be stealthy at all? I'm I'm just trying to get there full speed. Like you know, someone's in trouble. I'm there to save them. Okay. I'm definitely not that. I'm definitely trying to not call attention to myself. Yeah, I think I think I was more of the uh, walking through an unfamiliar land kind of a thing. You know, you don't want to go through the wrong neighborhood. Right alongside. Okay, stealthers roll stealth. Stealthers. I gave myself more of a stealth stat, man. Theodore Machinsky, you're a stealther. (laughs) I'm a stealther. Oh, but I rolled poorly. Can I try? Can I push mine? I got a. You, you certainly can. Heck yes. Ha ha! Extreme nice. success. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. So yeah, you um, you just start like you go down to a crouch as your <laughs> your um dog dodging skills as a door to door salesman kicks in. <laughs> Uh, Tony, how'd you do? Uh, I failed that. Yeah, I failed that sneak. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh let's dear. Let's just go ahead and. Uh, I failed as let's well. Let's just deal with it. I also failed. Mo, can you not see our rules? I want to. I want to hear. I want to hear in your voice. That's why I ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not as sneaky as I thought I was. <laughs> You're saying this out loud with the best part. <laughs> <laughs> like behind yeah, the what you doing all the <laughs> Yeah, so we're so we're walking along, and I and I say to Theodore, you know, when you go through the kitchen, sometimes you bump into a few things here, but whatever you got to do to make the stromboli. <laughs> Don't call attention to me. I, I'm in my natural element. When a cell goes bad, sometimes you got to skedaddle real quick. <laughs> Away. So those of you that have failed, you hear snapping twigs and dry foliage underneath you. Uh, I would say by foliage to be more specific. There are these sort of like really brittle bushes around. They're kind of almost look hairy. Um, and the grass itself is, is dead. Uh, but also there's like this really coarse patches of weird coarse grass. And it just makes you uncomfortable being near it for some reason. It just makes um, me uncomfortable being near it for some reason. <laughs> and that stuff just makes a weird sound when you step on it. It's like a... <sighs> so it's it's really odd. So you stepped on that a few times. You got a few... <laughs> you Sounds like phlegm. Yeah, phlegm grass. That's what we can call yeah. it. <laughs> I'm familiar with phlegm. It's got kind of like a, a, a greasy spaghetti-ish huh. texture. <laughs> <laughs> um anyways so you reach the location where you heard this scream and through the trees in front of you there's sort of one large tree um and there's like a a collection a smattering of of smaller trees that you can see through uh, ahead beyond that large tree and there are figures in the distance about four of them that are kind of these squat, bizarre forms, like goblins you would see in a nightmare. And they're faintly shining with this translucent blue light. And they're kind of, it looks like they're, can I get a spot hidden? Come right up. This is from all of us? Yes. Anyone who's looking. Wow, I oh. failed. <laughs> I also For failed. Once, hey. Everyone failed except Tony Stromboli. Hold <laughs> on. Tony yeah. Stromboli succeeding by hitting yeah. it right on. Fate has balanced the scales in your favor. <laughs> you see what looks like dancing or some strange undulation. They're kind of hopping around, waving what look like uh, glittering sharp tools and you hear this sound that they're making and they're going uh 
so uh, so there's like uh, some things, some people like there's some people dancing out there with what look like sharp objects making a weird noise. Uh, I don't think I'm prepared to deal with anyone potentially stabbing me today. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Eagle face, you got a, you got a, a helmet on. So maybe you lead the quest. Indeed. I say old chap. I am skilled in bird. I need is a weapon. I'll if take needed. care of these rap scallions. Uh, can I spot hidden to see if there's anything I can use as a weapon around me? Yeah. You totally wow. can. Wow. Holy crap. I find nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you look. I'll roll a spot hidden as well to help you look for something. Much appreciated, doll. Go for I it. rolled a 31 out of 50. That's a success. Okay. So, um, Edward, you're looking at, you're scanning the ground. You find nothing really of use. Paris, you see this happen. You see this um, inability to find anything that can be used to... Uh, to fight back against whatever is up there. But um, you see something glinting underneath a bush in the right corner of your eye. Would you like to investigate? Yeah. I'm going to say, I think I found some. I think I found something. And then lean over. But I'm doing a, a bit of a stage whisper. What have you got there, doll? Let's take a look. You find a butcher knife. Uh, this will be nicely. <laughs> Convenient. It's the blade appears to be um, cracked. Almost, it almost looks like stone. It looks so worn and used and old. However, it also looks like it's got a sharp edge on the parts of it that aren't like chipped and chopped. Well, and Vegas can't be choose as I say. So let me tell you the stats for it real quick. It is a one D six plus damage bonus. Let me figure out how to add that. You have acquired the sinister looking butcher knife. Uh, toggle I edit mode on and then knife. go to combat. And so what was it? One D four. 1d6 plus damage bonus. I don't think I have a damage bonus, so I'm good. Okay. Um, Alex, are, is your character uh, next to Paris right now? Uh, I, I would think so. I figured we were checking it out together. Okay, so can you both give me a spot hidden? Uh, again? Second. Yes, again. Okay, give me two again. seconds. This would be under Brawl. I can't see a thing, apparently. Uh, give me a few seconds. I'm just very slowly trying to figure out how this works. I'm just going to keep it as a note. Sorry, take your time. 36. I got another success. So this is kind of a, a big uh, cluster of these strange hairy bushes and you notice that uh there is what looks like a bundle of rags and rocks underneath um are you gonna like try to get a bit of a better focus uh yeah i'm going to point it out verbally so that way um edward falcon christ can see it as well okay. and then i'm gonna go investigate it um my knife in my hand you have stumbled upon the remains of a um, badly decomposed skeleton. Oh my! What does he do? He's uh, wearing, or the the skeleton is wearing um, uh, torn, uh, dusty, old clothes, and the bones have been um, look like they've taken a beating. The knife was close to this um, uh, the skeleton's hand. Okay. Wonder who this old chap was. I have a question that I'm going to regret asking. 
Does yeah. anything happen to my sanity for seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, I know I'm that kid that said you didn't assign homework, but I figured I would ask. <laughs> Either way, That's you fair. know, it's, it's, it's middling uh, sanity at best. But, yeah, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I guess that probably hits me too, right? Yes. Oh, yes. So uh, what am I doing? Taking a sanity roll? Uh, yeah, roll for sanity. Okay. Fair. You fell? Yep. Okay. It has occurred to me that I never added my sanity in there. Well done. As I know. As I, know I thought I would have added everything else. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what the skills are to to roll for sanity. It's, it's oh, it's equal, equal to, to your, your power. Uh, oh, it's equal to your power. Oh, oh nice. Right. Uh, it's equal to your uh, is it power or intelligence? I thought it was intelligence. Yeah, I think it's power. Yeah, it was power. power. Sounds. Yeah. Oh, uh, we just, I just made my character yesterday and I made cat, okay. I helped cat with her character too. Okay. And I, I put it in the wrong stat. So I definitely failed. I have very low sanity. That's not good. <laughs> I have a very high sanity and I failed it. Excellent. Brilliant. All good. Oh, thank you. Um, so you both lose a sanity, um, mainly just for the shock of seeing us. How much? One sanity point. Okay. Just for, mainly just the, the jolt of seeing a uh, long past Singular skeleton. sanity. Yeah. I heard eight <laughs> as in six, seven, eight and freaked out. But oh, we are wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I you was can't. like, okay then. No bones. <laughs> now, what are you guys doing over there? Oh, we just found something uh, rather unpleasant. Vote your eyes. More unpleasant not, than the people with the like scabby you. stuff? Well, first things first, lower your voice. But also, sorry. we were found in graves, and some people may have stayed in that grave for a while. Uh, well, we don't know they were like graves. They could have been burying money. That's true. I still do not have my money. And I, they I robbed could have tossed a all of their people. old flour. They're old yeah, strumbolies. Sure. You gotta put them somewhere. <laughs> no money to be found here. Only a body. Uh, Can okay. I get a spot hidden from everyone, please? Yeah. You bet. This is gonna be my one. Right. Ah, hard Can success. I eat at one of these tonight? Finally. <gasps> Critical Ooh. success. I rolled a one. Well done, Eagle Eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just good at looking at things apparently got two hards and an extra, uh, critical wow. so, I don't see nothing two hards I didn't have my glasses on this for a second time. I've seen nothing I love Gertie with all of my passion <laughs> <laughs> I see nothing I'm reminded of olive oil a little bit from the Popeye cartoon <laughs> oh Popeye <laughs> <laughs> All of you notice that those forms in the distance are approaching. Oh, shit. Like, everyone hide. What do you think I've been doing? Yeah. Goody, come, come over here. <laughs> like, <laughs> in like a ghillie suit. Like, <laughs> Goody, come I in. I have a 44 in disguise, so. <laughs> I, got a so five in I dropped to the ground. Uh, I guess I roll stealth here. Yeah, I everyone roll stealth. To, um, stealth. Should I re-roll? No, so uh, let's do it this way. All of you roll a roll stealth with a penalty dice, except for uh, Theodore. You get oh, a right, okay. bonus. Okay. I don't know how to roll. Oh. How to oh, that. wow. So I got, a, I got an even worse failure. How do you do oh, that? Yeah. What is a penalty dice in this? How do you roll with it? Is that hard? I would. Oh, I see. I would say maybe if you roll like a ten separately, uh, and then you could. Uh, so the way that like uh, penalty dice oh God, and bonus you dice, uh, you just click the bonus slash penalty under your roll. Oh, awesome! Oh, oh, that. oh there it is. Yeah, yeah. You got a four oh. penalty. Oh, and a failure. 
I don't know. Where my <laughs> I mean, I rolled a 60 and then I rolled a six for my bonus. So I, I still failed. <laughs> got an eight penalty. Uh, I think that's good. A 48 and then an eight. Damn. I think we're oh. all in plain sight, chaps. Yeah. Uh, no, I got, I got, I just keep getting worse. I just got to stop rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear these, what sound like, uh, sickly, like dog yelps come from these things. Oh no. And this, um, what sounds almost like if a, uh, a rabid animal had a engine in its throat that it was revving up. <laughs> That's kind of what they're okay. all doing. They're making this sound as they're uh, they're like uh, scuttling towards the group of you gathered together. 